Well, good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folaring. We'll look at the letter from the former president, Ulisha Gwabasanjo, to President Muhammadu Buhari. It's a letter that has caused a lot of reaction. Some people, as some people put it, uh, some headlines receives knocks and uh, it receives knocks from some and indeed it receives uh, what commendation from some. Some have said it was timely, uh, it's long needed and uh, some have said you need to be reading th between the lines. But as often in this country, um, our beloved country, there were those who will politicize just about anything. The opposition uh, people, uh, people uh, PDP, the opposition, opposition PDP has embraced the letter and virtually adopted it as its own. Um, we've not heard very much from the presidency, if anything at all, in relation to this letter in terms of responding to it. Um, I'm not very surprised because in the past, the president uh, reportedly has forbidden his officials from responding to these public letters. But the other thing that might be significant is that while the letter was written to President Muhammadu Buhari, it was an open letter. And former President Obasanjo explained that he needed to make it open because the matters were of monumental uh, importance. And um, he just felt that everybody needed to have it. Um, you know, he, everybody just needed to know what was being said. And um, he spoke about Nigeria being at the edge of a precipice. And uh, those who are saying you need to read between the lines say that, look, when you get beyond the name calling, when you be get beyond all the emotionalisms, when you get beyond all the politicizations of things, that um, it it's, a, it's a letter that, um, according to them, have very, very, um, how, how does one put it now, uh, pregnant uh, aspects to it. Now, all of that, my guest this morning, Mr. Majid Jamil, Executive Editor of Upshots uh, Reports, and Mr. Chuk Swoko, publisher and social commentator. Um, thank, you. thank you very much, gentlemen, for coming on. And um, we, 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 we not need to sort of see what you think of the letter, quite frankly. Because the letter was written to President Muhammadu Buhari, but intentionally was made public so that you and I and just about everybody else shall see it across the world. Give me your impressions. Um, could I start with you, Majid? Um, this is yet another in the series of uh, the letters written by um, the former uh, president. And since he left office, he's been writing to um, most of the uh, his, uh, most of his uh, successors. But this particular one, I mean, uh, it's something I think um, the president and his uh, team should take. As in, I mean, President Muhammadu Buhari and his team should take seriously. We are not in an electioneering uh, year. Elections are done and dusted. And um, so you wouldn't say um, it's a way, uh, it's an attempt by uh, former President Obasanjo to diminish the uh, chances of um, a Buhari in an election uh, year. So. I mean, it's about for me a cabinet having just been elected. So, uh, the import I want I want us to take Obasanjo aside and look at the message in that letter. Uh, it calls for serious national concerns, especially given what happened to um, uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Funke um, Olakunri. Mm. Um, over the weekend okay. in on those things. Which, which the president roped into his letter. Which he roped into which, And that letter. letter clearly must have been prepared before then. That, that, that is but, it. But I mean, as artists sometimes yeah, do, they add a bar. Generally, all over the country, there is so much insecurity, which, I mean, I am from the Southwest, That's for example. Each point. time I travel to Ikiti, mm. I mean, I have my heart in my in my mouth. Mm, mm, uh, you, you want to go by road, um, you are afraid. Even if you go by air, you land in Akure, and on your way to Adwake, you don't know what will happen to you. Mm -hmm. It that shouldn't be. Gone were those days that, that people, I mean, would set out from uh, Lagos at uh, I mean six, seven, eight, nine p.m. And you want to it's go not on the a ride. Thing to do yeah, you want to go on a ride to yes. uh, uh, several parts of the country. I mean, it will be suicidal contemplating 
that now. Even for those who travel in the daylight, they have been attacked. So there must be a pragmatic approach beyond uh, a security summit, which uh, the uh, governors of the Southwest held recently. I think there should be a national approach to this disaster waiting to happen. It's like exactly. said, we, have a, we have a clear and present danger, which unfortunately, at least Obasanjo, Joe, that is drawing the attention of the present administration to it. Mm. Mm. Indeed. Thank you very much, uh, Majid. And uh, that seems to be the import of what former President Obasanjo wanted to put across, that these are dire times. And he said, we're at the edge of a precipice. And when you look at it, when you, when you understand what he is saying, he's a former president. These people, they have, their, they, they have their knowledge, they have their means of knowledge, they have their own intelligence, even if they're no more in office. And so there's a sense in which there are those who are saying, look, um, former President Abbasanjo might not be their favorite person. But as Majid said, could they just separate the messenger from the message from and um, look at what he's saying? Uh, is it indeed, do you think it is pregnant with meaning of, of, of danger? Absolutely. But I want to start by speaking to the family of the, of, of, of the uh, woman who died last weekend, that they are not the only ones that are in pain. I share in the pains. When you are blessed with your daughter, daughters are good. And you are, when you are blessed with one gold and you lose it, at its, and in the circumstances in which they lost that lady, they need to know that they're not the only ones who share the pain. In fact, I brought out what I was going to wear to this event, and it was actually white. And my daughter said to me, why are you changing? And I said, because I, f I want to connect and empathize with that old man, that elder statement who lost his daughter, and the entire family. I share in the pain, and I want to let them know that the Lord is with them. But it was somebody's responsibility to actually protect that lady. That person has failed. Back to the letter. Yes. The personality needs at this time, if you read the letter, there's something that you can first take away from that letter. That's the tone of this very letter. It's completely different from the previous letters that Obasanjo has written. So I agree with Moshe that the messenger must be separated because the man has spoken the minds of all those of us who cannot write uh, let on this security issue. I'm not a security expert, but you are not. Um, Majid is not. But nobody has taught us how to protect ourselves and our families. So it means that we are all security conscious. Well, the, the, the aspect of um, not dealing uh, with, that is, as a former president to a sitting president, um, there are those who think that that, w was that necessary? Absolutely. We sit in fact, we're basically at war, as it were. Because I remember a story that... Because he was speaking to the entire, not just the entire nation, the entire world, world about absolutely, the, because the way he sees absolutely. This, the, state of, uh, the state of the nation. Yeah, because this is and not this the only place where, the watch, where... This is not the, the, the only country where there's and this insecurity. this the watch of another president. Yes. But he wasn't sharing this with him absolutely. personally, absolutely. privately. This is not the only country where there's insecurity. But the difference between what is going on here and other crimes, you can see what Trump is doing just to protect America. What is going on here, it's an indication that Nigeria is at war. And if you read that letter and you see the way he paragraphed it, and that letter is not too much of a departure from the June 12th uh, pronouncement, presidential uh, speech by Mr. President, particularly as regarding security, as connected to paragraph 65K of June 12th um, uh, presidential speech. What Obasanjo has said is not far from that short paragraph. So he is speaking the minds of millions of people who have children and daughters like the woman who was killed this last weekend. So there's need for the president to sit down and react to this letter separating the personality. Like he said, the elections are over, so he's not trying to damage any person's uh, chances well, exactly. or, or personality. Is that all of that is over. And, and, and I, didn't see that, did, he didn't point... I didn't see that oversized personality, whatever, in the letter. I saw a different, mellowed tone. I, 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 you can see somebody who is um, not happy, but has brought his emotions under control by speaking to authority that there is need 
to do something about what is going on in our country. Because and, arti people, and articulating sensitive subjects such as... Uh, absolutely. Such, such, such and as preferring solution in the letter, yeah, they yeah. preferred few steps mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that he mm -hmm. believes mm -hmm. from his little corner that... If, if he was going to suggest. Yes, if he was going to suggest. People that, these that are be involved, involved in, in this. sitting together and find a solution. But I disagree that but he was you need to call a whole... Because it's a large uh, meeting that he has called uh, for. Because he was virtually calling per perhaps for another, you know, confab. Conf 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 but there's conf no conf need. <clears throat> you, you don't need a confab. What we need is leadership. Why has... I heard that the vice president, uh, during the course of this uh, discussion, if you give me the opportunity, I'm going to be speaking to the vice president on what I believe should be his contribution, what he should be doing at this time. In this time, in our national whatever, as a, as a light carrier, I would like to speak to him as a brother. Something needs to be done to protect the lives that you people asked us to vote for you. You are saying to us that you will protect us. And we can't have people dying on the highway okay. and our streets M because you're not doing your job. Majid, there are a number of issues out there that, um, you know, and, and I like how you put it that we should, you know, we, we perhaps could benefit from separating the messenger from the message. The message contains some of those difficult um, subject matters as, uh, as well that relate to uh, President uh, Muhammadu Buhari as perceived. There are those that talk about sectionalism, the, uh, nepotism, uh, you know, uh, and all of that. Even going on to the very worrisome matter of, um, you know, religion and ethnicity. He addressed all of those things, but the tone was different. Um, how significant do you think this is? Yeah, you know, like, uh, like, Chuk. like, like, like Chuk said, this letter was well crafted, and you won't want to put it down. And no, even if you are not a fan of Obasanjo, I'm not a fan of Obasanjo, but mm -hmm. I read that letter twice, mm -hmm. and. It speaks the mind of most Nigerians because so, so when people you, when, when 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 you have heard the voice saying that he should be arrested for that, well, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know there has been yes uh, I, a section saying that of course so why 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 because is, somebody responded yes. by saying that I mean it's been um, that has been it has been part of the problem. Exactly. Uh, you see, you can't wish that away, and, and that's why I said we should divorce or basunjo from this letter and look at the message in that letter. I mean, he has written several letters in the past and I've come out to say that this old man has come again. Mm -hmm. But this particular one now, when you look at the country, the, the things that have been happening in, in the country, the in-law of the uh, president uh, that was um, uh, kidnapped in Daura for, um, for 43 days, Why, when he was released, I mean, some of the suspects that were arrested confessed that they were militia trained in Libya for the purpose of coming to Nigeria to terrorize. And they have, I mean, that they, they discover that um, uh, headsmen and they've been nomadic uh, uh, cattle rearers, I mean, uh, does not give them much resources as much as kidnapping, banditry, and even the remnants of a Boko Haram. So, and each time our uh, security uh, operatives come to tell us, especially the army, that uh, Boko Haram has been decimated and yes, yes, uh, yes. what have you, you discover that it is the remnants of uh, uh, Boko Haram, of the insurgents, that are coming back to uh, kidnapping and armed banditry. And you see the manner of the attacks if they are not going to abduct people with uh, AK-47 rifles and stuff like that, you see them uh, uh, waylay uh, 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 people on the on the highway and to 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 to, to kidnap them and do all sorts of things. And and of so that, people get I mean, killed in, the in the prison. The army chief was speaking the other day about his his troops. Yeah, the, the, the army you chief know, was, the, his was, troops, was talking you can't, about. You can't depend on them anymore. Absolutely. Yes, that uh, the, 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 their morale is low. Yes. Is it? Uh, Majid Jamil that will boost the model of uh, the military when some of them have to uh, buy um, uh, uh, boots and, and kits for themselves, where we have billions of naira stashed in uh, pension funds for both the military and the army sitting down there 
uh, while some people are earning interest on it, mm. something that is supposed to be used to better the lots of uh, these people, so, and the, their chief is coming to tell us that uh, their morale is low. Is it Moji Jami that, that boosts their morale so, by providing so, so, their, so, their funds? So this is not really a letter that can be flicked away no, with, with a political finger. That it's politics. Oh, it, this, is what, this is what the man does. This, this one is different. This, this is different. This is different. If, especially in content, when you look at in it. character, in structure, in every aspect. The letter is very simple. You think really? it strikes a chord? Of, it, know, does. That, it does. It you does. Know, although there will still be, as you know, it does. any any issue like this, there will be the, those for and those against. And that's, but, that's what leadership is all that, about. Leadership is not is a popularity yes, contest. Yes, a, leadership is doing, and I don't think Obasanjo has uh, has ever been a popular person. And I don't think he, he goes out looking for popularity. There are things that he has right from birth. So what I believe that should be done is the same leadership threat that uh, characters that, that he carries along. Buhari has it. Uh, that's our sitting president. He has it. He should be able to demonstrate. One of them is effective communication. You need to let us know what is going on. What are you doing? You don't need to call another confab for us to come up with a solution. If you come up with a solution, what happens to that solution if you do not have the character and the personality to execute it? <laughs> let us know what is going on. You can protect us. And at this time, I think I should speak to the vice president. The thing is that the vice president is my brother because we share the same um, fate. And he understands because he's a, a pastor. You are a light carrier. You cannot carry light to a place where there's darkness and people are dying. You know what the Bible says in the book of Ezekiel. When you, when you are in authority, and you, especially as you aspire for that position, you are saying that you are taking responsibility for every, every human being. Hmm. So if one person dies, you are the one that is going to give an account. Okay. So he knows, um, he knows uh, what I'm talking okay. about. Um, you people uh, should I protect our citizens. Are you, are, you, are, you, are you talking about Christianity? Because I'm you not know, talking about Christianity. Yeah, I'm okay. talking, about talking about leadership. Light bearer and that kind of a thing. That's what he carries. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, good morning, Mr. George. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Thank you very much for calling. And good morning to uh, the two guests. Yes, good morning. morning good morning. Uncle Yori, I have said this several it is not what you say or, or do that counts, but what lies behind what you say or do. I am not carried away by the emotions of this letter. Look at the antecedents of the writer and his strategies. Only about three weeks ago, this same person who has ruled Nigeria twice, three times for that matter, came out to accuse the current president that he's fulanizing Nigeria and Islamizing Nigeria, accusing him of unfounded allegations aimed at inciting Nigerian ethnic groups against each other. Then, a few weeks later, he's coming out with a choreographed letter aimed at pacifying people. This is a former president that doesn't attend National Council of State meetings where previous heads of state meet to discuss the security matters of the nation. Who is he trying to please? In, during his own time, the highest uh, profile murder in Nigeria happened. Bola Ege, Harry, and several others that up to today, nobody knows what has, uh, or, you know, who, who was responsible. When you say you are writing a letter as a former head of state, the context, I've read the letter three times, more than Mujid. He read it twice. But these are things that, as a former head of, head of state, a statesman, he can sit down with the president, the current president of the country, and iron them out with him. What stopped him from doing that if he meant well? He sponsored a candidate that he wanted to uh, be the president. That one did not win, and he has been doing everything to make sure the country is ungovernable. This same candidate is sponsored, made a statement, it's on video, that if he doesn't win the election, the country will become ungovernable. And we have been seeing instances of the proof of his threat. Okay. What okay. are we saying? Okay. I'm not... Okay. If, if that's the case, then we... This man should be oh. made to account for our $16 billion. If we had $16 billion in Nigeria <laughs> and we pumped it into electricity, okay. there will be employment. Okay. And people will not go into banditry and armed robbery. All right, then. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Good morning, and thank you very much for calling in. On, on that particular note, I've heard it said that the day trouble started was the day Buhari asked the question, 
where what has happened to let our, him provide our leadership after you know the spending six so let him provide leadership but, but that that is if, if you if you is, follow is the, what the letter is saying absolutely um um you know i think somebody said here that uh, yeah it was you that abbas and joy uh, is not interested in any popularity contest he's gonna I, no he's, i said that he's gonna call it the way he sees it yes he's gonna call it the way he sees it it's just that well president abbas and joy he's 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 a unique person Absolutely. and uh, there are those who have criticized him as a uh, being coming off sometimes as a something of a no all but everybody's entitled to the opinion there are others who see him as a a citadel of wisdom and knowledge but so uh, different strokes for different folks but no, well, whether we like it or not Obasan Jody remains who he is one of the greatest leaders out of Nigeria that you can't wish away we can't wish it away. neither can you wish his writings or his opinions that away. is it it's, been, it's, still, it's, it's still be, yeah and habit it's yes. still being called to come and mediate in international crisis and, and what have you but uh, the issue of uh, the uh, 16 billion, let the government deal with that, the Mambila uh, power project. Let mm. the government deal with that. That one is, is something else. Like I said, it's not as if we are starting another election. He has so spoken to exactly. issues that concerns us. I mean, uh, an, an elderly statesman, you need to see the gory pictures. I mean, coming from the con condolence vi uh, visits to, to, to power fashion. Chief Falai has been attacked twice in his farm. It's becoming almost difficult for farmers so to short, go and farm. The letter virtually is stating that there is no performance as far as President Obasanjo can see, former in, President Obasanjo. Yeah, in terms of security. In, in, terms, terms, of security. in terms of security, yeah. that he hasn't seen any performance whatsoever. Uh, Ayo Bami in Badagri, good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Thank you for calling in. Yeah, Uncle Yori, uh, good morning. This is my first time of calling to your program. Okay, we're delighted to have you. Yeah. Let us call a spade a spade. We don't need to be beating about the bush. The truth of the matter is that the problem is emanating from PDP. If PDP takes over the government tomorrow, the problem will also come from the APC. This thing has been are being sponsored by the party. We are just deceiving ourselves in this country. This thing are being sponsored by the party. And these Fulani ex men are the people that are not on the streets. They are in the bush. These people are being trained in Libya to just terrorize this country because of the upcoming election. And you know one thing about Nigerian is that which what? upcoming election? We've just we, finished one le one election now. Election is coming now, 2023. Yes. Oh, oh, is it, is it the 2023 election you're talking about? Good. I'm talking about 2023 election. It's near These now. people will we, we we, we haven't even appointed the ministers have. for this new one. As far as you're concerned, that's the situation for, for politicians. Okay. Oh, listen, one thing you don't understand. Yes, I'm talking about the future. They will cook whatever they want to cook in order to use it to campaign against the other party. These people have been saying it on the video. If they trace it down, you will discover that it is this party stalwart that are sponsoring these terrorists. So okay. anything that comes up, they call it full and men because the present uh, president is a full animal. And that is just the truth about the issue. If PDB comes to power tomorrow, I'm telling you the truth. The same problem will be given by APC as well, too, okay. in order for them to campaign. These people are not concerned about our welfare. They are only concerned about the money that goes into their pocket. Okay. So right. we should be just say the truth and let the devil be ashamed. Thank you very much, uh, Ayobami. Th thank yeah. you very much. Appreciate your call. Um, but having said that, there are people who feel that it's become almost like the wild, wild west. You know, that, that, that concept where anything can happen, the, the author, security authorities appear to have no grip over the situation. Absolutely. And uh, former President Obama Senjo is putting the box squarely at President Buhari's Absolutely. table on his desk and saying that essentially you need to be doing something. Absolutely. I've not seen anything uh, you know this is why people are saying that ooh, it, it seems political that why are you speaking like that publicly uh, there's there should be some 
maybe all this matter of etiquette. Uh, you notice that in America, uh, former presidents and uh, sitting presidents, they're very circumspect about what they say in public. Absolutely. But, you know, our presidents, our former president, especially former president of Asinger, will write a well-thought-out letter. See, as yeah. everybody is saying now that this is a well-thought-out letter. <laughs> God knows how many words were in there. So it, it clearly was done before it was released. They just injected that uh, Mrs. Olakunri aspect into it. But again, uh, who from Ibejuleki? Tunji in uh, Ibejuleki, good morning. Yeah, good morning, sir. Thank you for how calling you in. Thank you for calling in. Thank you, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. I've tried several times, but I could not get across to you. Okay. Anyway, to so the letter written by uh, the former president, to the of mm. uh, and the response from the judge, I've been listening to your conversation, and each time an issue came up, and this a judge who come up and uh, talk about uh, former president, to the of Africa, in the disparaging manner. Now, in this case again, he made reference to the fact that this man spoke uh, some time ago about uh, fluidization and Islamization. But a week after former President Lucia Obasanjo made that statement, a week after was when Ruga came up. It was barely a week after that the issue of Ruga came up, and which you discussed sometimes on this panel. You brought uh, Professor Samuel. I tried to call you that day. And when he made that statement, Professor Samuel also came and one other guy. And they spoke against that statement by former President Lucien Govasonio. And then a week ago, when Luca came up, they said Professor Samuel came and he said something about Luca. Now, on the side of the people of Nigeria, that we don't want Luca. Now, the statement of former President Lucia Govatojo was condemned by all you people. Now he has made a statement again. I want Mr. George, instead of looking at the content, he is busy talking about where to do battle, what to do battle, or what Lucia Govatojo is, and what Lucia Govatojo is not. Nigeria is on fire. There is problem everywhere, problem of insecurity. Is anybody in this country immune? So this security problem in Nigeria, that somebody would have been talking about whether he likes a former president, and he meant also that the man has not been attending the, the Council of State meeting, which is not true. It's not true. Up to the last one that was held before election, former president Bush and Goba to Joe was in that Council of State meeting. It was shown in the, in the media. It was shown on the television. He attended the program. Mm. He attended and I don't know any of the council of state meeting that the man has not attended. Immediately he made that statement. They even, the letter he wrote, they met at all a uh, AU meeting, and they heard hand in hand to show President Buhari that, look, the issue I have with you is not personal. As the man constantly said it, I don't have any personal issue with Buhari, with President Buhari. All I am talking about is the issue of the nation. Right uh, uh, I've got to interrupt you. I've got to... not being sincere when it comes to the issue of this uh, country. Okay. Somebody said it the other time, uh, on another uh, channel. Mm -hmm. He said you can accuse Obasanjo of anything. He said, but you cannot accuse him of not being loyal, of not being sincere when it has to do with the issue of this country. All right, then. He Thank you very much. I've got to interrupt you. Uh, forgive me for doing so. I've got to interrupt because I've got to go on break. The point about... Um, Loyalty, patriotism of president of former of uh, former president uh, of Asanjo. You say he has never been in doubt. It can never be. Uh, well, a northern group was accusing him of not no. being patriotic. We'll go on a break now. We'll be right back. Please stay with us. Welcome back, and um, we're looking at uh, former President Obasanjo's letter to uh, PMB. It was a, a letter to the world, actually, but, you know, uh, I suppose the first constituency would be, yes, President uh, Muhammadu Buhari, then 
every Nigeria. Now, he's recommended, uh, as he put it, the tone. You, you, you spoke about the tone being mm -hmm. different. That, look, if I could dare to suggest those that I think uh, can be useful or helpful in, in addressing these problems and finding solutions to them, he then mentioned, quite frankly, just about everybody. everybody. Just about everybody. Essentially calling for another uh, conference. Um, spoke about traditional rulers. Post -to -post -to he did so, I believe, mm -hmm. because just before that, the military, that, that list, he the had talked about how that Nigeria has a very huge asset in terms of the ethnic varieties that we have. Yes. So in making that list, I believe that's what yeah. he included almost everybody. Uh, just about everybody. But I disagreed with him concerning another confab or another meeting to be able to provide security for us. Like I said to you, June 12th, uh, Mr. President stood there uh, and made some very long, lovely pronouncement on virtually every issue. And one of the issues was how that going forward, that no individual or group of persons would be allowed, and it will not be tolerated for this group of people to do whatever. So whether it's Obasanjo that is causing it or APC or PDP, this is the time for leadership. Mm. Strong Espe especially, leadership. Es it doesn't matter. Especially the very delicate and troublesome matter about... Of insecurity. Um, uh, of life's in insecurity, but also the ethnic divides that are... Whatever that, it that is, people this is are at great pain for to leadership. defuse. Nigerians want to see people being arrested, yes. people and being, being punished and being brought, for, to book. being brought to book for all this uh, banditry, kidnapping. It's not happening. Kidnapping. It's not, it's and, not happening. And, and people are yeah. taking their own interpretation. Absolutely. That, that is it, it. it might suit the presidency to call it a misinterpretation, but, but and, clearly people are taking their own interpretation and, 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 and it is not... Whether you want to say it's... A, uh, whatever, you, whatever name you want to call it, those who have been arrested for kidnapping and this banditry are from a particular section of the of the country, and when I mean, they, they make confessional statements, mm -hmm. I mean, most of them are uh, Fulani headsmen. There's there's there no doubt about that. They uh, and w when you hear people's narratives mm. of, I mean, uh, she Fala is said those who uh, abducted him in 2015 and those who attacked him in 2015 and 2017 mm. were speaking Hausa language. And the guys who uh, abducted the in-law of the president when they were arrested, they said they were trained in Libya. I mean, they were uh, from a particular sector of the country. So if these people are brought to book and people can, Nigerians can say that there are conscious you know, efforts yes. by our leaders to yes. provide us with yes. security, then yes. nobody will, Obasanjo won't be writing this kind of a, a letter. Because it's a big problem. Because yes. people feeling that the president being a Fulani man himself, and that is... Um, it's not just a Fulani, it's an elite. Fulani elite, yes, that's very important. That, that's very important. That, it's an that, elite. that he's looking away from, from some hard issues Absolutely. is the way it is the perception and is. if it is the opposition what the truth is if it is the opposition it, it, it that is, is making the country ungovernable for you then deal with it deal with it deal with it, deal with it. if it's opposition that is causing it yes. Fem, deal Fem, with Fem it Fem Sule, uh, thank you very much for holding on all this while good morning i think i've lost him already or oh, is he still there is Fem in Sule, still there so we oh, please we, we can we can take excuses that's why we have a leadership the book stops on the table of the president. He is our leader. I mean, a government is um, elected to provide security amongst all other things for the citizenry. And in a situation where we are being compelled to look for alternative security for ourselves, then we are, we are heading towards um, a, a calamitous situation. Because the truth must be, uh, the, I think the truth of the matter is that people don't feel Secured. Secure. Absolutely. They don't feel safe. No. And, uh, and people, have begun, fear, to warn, people, people have begun to warn each other that, wait a minute, even though you are in the south here, don't feel that you are safe, that no. this is a matter here, it's in the distant no. north. It could come and... And it didn't start thing, now. It didn't. I lost a friend recently. In fact, he was in my event in December. He died in um, December. But his death was coming because two years before, his mother died in Wari area. So he left Lagos to go and make an arrangement in worry. He got on the road, they stopped his ve the vehicle he was inside, uh, they picked a few individuals out of, out, out of the vehicle, and he happened to be one of the individuals mm. that was picked. He was taken into the bush. Uh, he came back to Lagos after a couple of weeks with an open head. Yes. And all that, and all that. Uh, but he died this last December.
Mm. You know, so it's been going on. The reason this okay. one has written, this letter has written, is because the daughter of a prominent and elder statement has been killed, and we need to do something about it. Okay. Okay. Uh, sorry, I have Anekwe in Derby. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning, Yorin. Good morning. Yeah. Thank you for um, calling in. Yeah. Thank you for allowing me to contribute anyway. Go Hi. ahead, please. I just want to speak about the letter uh, the sure. former president wrote to our current president. Sure. Please, please, something has to be done and quickly. Just last three weeks, I have a poultry with my family at a, like a going to Muwo. This was very, it is very well spent uh, poultry. And the, these people, these flani herdsmen, they are going there with their cattle. My wife, they are not going there anymore. They are afraid. They don't employ people to be going there anymore. Uh, you know, recently, they don't go there anymore because they are afraid of it. They say the, the, the cattle are there are more than 50. Yeah? Why should this thing be happening? Tell you, I travel from here to Manchester at least two times every month from Derby to Manchester. From Derby to Manchester, you can never see any cattle. The farmers, they live inside, right inside their farm. Mm. With a way secluded the three, two or three fence. Why should this be happening? A very simple thing somebody can, you know, just, you know, attend to. Very okay. simple, you know, reason. Okay. And we are, look, I don't want to be killed. I want to come to, back to Nigeria and face this very poultry. Okay. I, I'm afraid to come back now. All Why? Right. Mm. Why Thank can something be done? Why should they put, for, uh, you know, this car to the whole country? It's, um, it, okay. When I look at it, it's like, uh, what type of country is this? All right, then. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Anikwe. Appreciate your call. This reminds me of um, a quote that, you know, is all over the place by Professor Shoyinka that uh, we have a serious problem where cattle, the life of cattle, mm. you know, more is more important life. than yeah. human life. But the good prof, you know, he, 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 he has his way with words and, um, you know, he, he, he crafted out that statement and um, it's been put out there. But again, it seems to work for a lot of people. This is a matter of elders, wise men uh, speaking where the ordinary person cannot be heard. And there's no way you throw away what Professor Shienka says. There's no way you throw away what uh, former president... Yeah, this, uh, this one, we can't throw it away, but there are things they have spoken in the past. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, yeah. that I, I yeah. disagree. That's and, why and you people said that this is things, different. I get, I get and that's why I people get, have said that separate the message this time. Say, because I didn't win an election, I will make your, the country ungovernable. And you allow him mm. to enjoy his whatever. So, in the past, they've spoken, they are the ones who are causing this problem. Because they said too many things that just hang there in the air and are instigating these things. But this one, like I said, is completely different. The tone is different. You can see a humble yeah. man who is writing it and seeking it, peace and all that. And, yeah, all. and but, I think that's the direction. But they were striking one or two notes. Uh, the letter, I think, is struck, no matter how obliquely, at notes of nepotism, almost tribalism. But uh, uh, Mark in Germany, I hear. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Puyori. Good morning. Good morning to your guest. Good morning, sir. Good Thank morning, you for calling in. Go ahead, yeah. please. Yeah, I just to contribute to the topic of the day. Sure. Yeah, I think uh, it, most times in Nigeria, when certain things come up like this, we, we try to look at the personality rather than the, the message being passed. And like uh, your guest there said, we may not like Obasanjo as a person. Sometimes some of us are not his fans, so to say. But you can't take it away from him when it comes to setting disposition to national issues, especially when it uh, comes to issue of patriotism, security, and all that. As president, uh, Obasanjo dealt with people who were even from his own part of the country. That many of us believe that when it comes to issue of uh, ethnic bigotry, you can't you can't accuse Obasanjo of that. You know, look at the the the, the, the politics. I mean, the type of people who were in his cabinet. They, it 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 displayed the the, the, the national spread that we, we talk about. So the, the current president may be doing certain things with regard to security, but they are not assuring enough. When sometimes what we see is just silence, silence, silence mm -hmm. in the face of some of these uh, mm -hmm. uh, pressing national issues, especially mm -hmm. with regard to security. Mm -hmm.
to me, every Nigerian life, matter, I mean, every life taking matters, it, it mustn't be somebody who is important in society. And this thing keeps happening every day, the same tendency, the same trend. And all we do is to politicize things, we throw sour grapes, and then we begin to, you know, I think it, it's something that calls for serious uh, urgent, if, if possible, if we can even call a national emergency where all stakeholders will come and, you know, talk about how to come out of this situation. Yeah. We should stop politicizing it. Okay. That PDP, it knows no PDP or APC. Mm -hmm. All right, thank, so thank, thank you, Ma'am. When the likes of Mr. George you always come to talk about, I see people, because you don't like Obama, so they will throw away the message. I think it will not be good for our country. So thank, that is thank just you, my contribution for today. Thank you for calling in, Ma'am. Now, let's, let's look at how the presidency has responded to uh, former President Obasanjo's letter. Imagine if it was Trump that received this letter. Because the response has been largely silence. Yeah. You, imagine if the, you if you and, um, this letter to I I, 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 I remind, uh, if you recall the reminder, I said in the past, it's been, we, we know that the presidency has forbidden his officials from responding uh, publicly to what elders uh, say. So I don't know if that instruction is still in force. Well, you cannot but, have a relationship. If you stop but, but the officials we, uh, from uh, speaking, uh, then you speak to us because you cannot have any relationship but, but, without, uh, without communication. Because exactly. It will break down. And this is the problem here. Whereas the it presidency is maintaining this... Definite silence. Well, the, the, this letter was... This issued, silence. This letter was issued about 24 hours ago. Around, it came out around 10 a.m. in the morning yes. yesterday. Yes. And um, I think... The response I would have expected uh, from uh, the presidency came from the VP after visiting um, uh, Baba Fashionati, yes. where he said um, arrangements are being made to deploy uh, the military along uh, the, our um, uh, the, 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 the highways. Uh, I mean, beyond, well, that's, beyond, that's we, beyond that, we need to improve on our security yeah. architecture. Beyond. Uh, issuing condolence messages each time these kind of things happen uh, condolence from the letters, uh, condo yeah. condolence yeah. letters uh, or uh, empathizing with Nigerians each time this time, uh, that thing happens. I mean, we want to see, uh, Nigerians want to see a situation where the president is oh, alive oh, to his oh, responsibility sure. of providing security for, for, for us. You know, but I think, I don't know if you agree, but um, that's whole matter of Mrs. Uh, 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 Olakunri, that one was added, you know, musicians do it all the time. They finish the work essentially, then something happens, you can just add one bar that will adjust everything and see, make it seem current. I just feel that you know, there was that there and um, it, it, had its, it had its job, it had its work and it has drawn this reaction that you have said. But I don't know, that's hardly the kind of, the letter was a lot more comprehensive. Than, than this statement here, and I don't know how, how, how far they can go maybe in the short term. Maybe they have to really digest in, in it a and understand the implication. In a charismatic matter of the presidency, I doubt if any reaction will come. Okay, okay. Um, Elijah Subaya, good morning. Uh, Mr. Yori, good morning. Thank you very much for calling in. Okay. Uh, I just want to, my contribution is this. Hello? Yes, we Hello? can hear you. We can hear you. Okay. Uh, the letter written by OBJ is, is, is not, is beyond Obasanjo himself. The letter written by OBJ is not only for Obasanjo, but it's for Nigeria. And Nigerians should understand the importance of that letter. It's not about Obasanjo, it's about Nigerian citizens. And in fact, uh, the president itself, you know, is, uh, and I believe what, the pre what President Mohamed Buhari is doing is beyond APC manifesto. It's beyond APC manifesto. Because what Nigeria expects from APC is not what we are seeing. And my appeal to the National Assembly and to, to, to the House of Rep is for them to rise up. Because I believe there's an agenda beyond this issue. There's an agenda by the President for this issue. And Nigeria should, should wake up. In fact, this type of issue has not been happening in Nigeria. It has, in the history of Nigeria, it has not been happening. Mm. And if, 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 if like a uh, you can tell, if Katu ranching is more important than Nigeria, then, I mean, you know, there's another thing behind it. That's okay. why I said there's an agenda, you know, behind this issue. 
well, Aka, especially from our president. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alaji Suba. In terms of agenda, Mr. President himself has spoken in terms of uh, his agenda, uh, security is to further improve, and now I'm quoting the presidency and the president in particular, to further improve uh, the security situation. It's not difficult. He, he said we're not where we need to be, but he did give the impression that there is no one sleeping in, in that re so, department. So he took the death of that vi vibrant woman. No, 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 no. He, he didn't say this I'm following not, following that. I, I know. You know. I, I, I know. I, I'm just trying to make okay. a reference to okay. what the uh, vice, president, uh, vice president said mm. about patrolling the highways with whatever. My friend okay. died. My friend was, was kidnapped uh, some time ago. He eventually died. His name is Kennedy Otedo. So he has to take the death of a, a, the daughter of a prominent Nigerian for you to recognize that we need to um, have surveillance on our highways and all okay. that. Some, in some, a country... You know, as, as people... I beg your pardon for interrupting. As people do on, on, on social media, somebody sent me one of those little memes uh, uh, where, where there was uh, Vice, Vice President Toshiba during the U.S. speaking with Trump and saying that... Uh, no, no, it was with, the, uh, the, Vice the, with the Vice President saying that the case of uh, what... Uh, 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 kidnapping. Kidnapping like, and all like of that pens, is, yeah. is over-exaggerated. Mm -hmm. It's far exaggerated. And then cutting... The, you know, right next to that is another picture of the same VP uh, saying that um, this is a very, very serious matter. We're going to put soldiers on the street. So there's a sense in which... Uh, you don't know what to... We're, we're not to too sure. What to make of... <laughs> exactly. I have um, uh, 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 Joshua in Irewalede. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Thank you for calling And me. I greet your guest uh, in the studio. Good morning. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, maybe Joshua is writing a letter on national issue to address the problem. Obasanjo is writing a letter for what? Obasanjo is the former head of state. Obasanjo is a product of the civil service. He was president for eight years. Obasanjo is a partition person. He's a PDP man. He publicly uh, endorsed the president or, or uh, the candidate of PDP as president. And for me, if, uh, I mean, I a short term agenda, because if Obasanjo didn't have his short term, he wanted to have his through article. Presently, there's still uh, a case being contested in court over this election matter. Joe writing a letter to. Obasanjo is a PDP candidate. He's not a nationalist. As far as this matter is concerned, when he tore his PDP card and said he was no longer going to participate in partition politics, I started regarding him as a statesman. But the moment he endorsed Atiku, he has no neutral thing to say about Nigeria again. Unfortunately, the security situation we are having today, let's stop talking. First, is, it is a, it's a, an issue of consequence. We are having the consequences of long years of misrule at the moment. Consequences cannot be avoided. That's the situation we are having. Are we telling Buhari that he should sidetrack the judiciary, that Buhari should become a militant? Is he a military head of state? When Buhari was trying to make some moves over the corruption issues, Buhari was being alleged to be extrajudicial. He was being alleged to be handling matters like he's still a military man. What do you want Buhari to do? What, do, what exactly do they want him to do? Is the judiciary not there? So unfortunately, you know, things are happening every day, and these are security issues. We have governors, we have... We have uh, you see, sorry, I, I would say about my community, mm -hmm. they, there was a situation where we had militants, you know, uh, doing oil bunkering. This has been the situation with that community, and they were said to be job people. They have been there for long. It was when Buhari came and they brought jets to bomb that place that that thing stopped, right? Now, if... Creeks are being uh, uh, militarized, and uh, banditry is happening everywhere. Is it suddenly that it's now full of needs that are the only criminals in Nigeria? We need to look at ourselves. 
we are suffering the consequences of past mistakes. Thank you very much. I've got, to, I've got to interrupt now. Thank you very much. Really appreciate your call. Thank you very much, uh, Joshua, uh, calling in from uh, Irewale. You see, this is it. That's why you see headlines say, you know, <laughs> knocks kudos. and kudos, kudos knocks. you know, it depends on who's Inside looking at it divide, and yeah. also perhaps the understanding. Mm -hmm. I know the difference between these kudos and knocks. The beauty about it is that you have leadership, not just leadership, strong leadership. I, I found out that you're, you're not my friend when I mentioned Trump. He just, the, he's not liked. In, in, I am not liked all that in my house because I set the rules and the regulations. A leader is not a popular person. That is why we have a president. He needs to look around which model can I copy in a democracy. Anyway, uh, uh, but the me. allegation in the letter, you know, essentially. The it, leadership it, it, needs it, it, to be provided. It, it, all this all this calls. I that, can have what, all these views. I, I suppose, that, that, these I, phone calls. Former President Obasanjo, I suppose he's one of the guys who can speak that way. Anybody else speaks like that, you just put it up. Absolutely. Now, that he's spoken that way, essentially criticizing the leadership of President Buhari, essentially. That's what he's, what he's doing. But as you said, uh, he has said in a different context that it's not personal, it's just business. And it's the business of Nigeria, uh, which is greater than all of us. Now, that's, that's the way he sees it. But I don't know the way the administration sees it. Uh, and President Obasanjo is coming from knowing, as it were, the corridors of power and how it works. He seems to think that if he were in there, he would, still do, he, he would be able to do a better job. And that's why he's taking this particular stance. To, How fair that is, uh, is, is another question. To be, to be a good leader. Victor in Port Harcourt, I understand. Good morning, Victor. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Good morning, sir. Thank you for calling in. Yeah. I want to contribute into this very issue you are discussing. Hello? Go ahead, please. Yeah, the, uh, I, I'm with the two gentlemen that are seated in you in your presence. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, to me, Obama's suggestion, this letter that is writing and writing all over every time, I expect him as an elder statement, it is one to be sincere to Nigeria. Buhari was his friend, was his junior officer when he was the military man. He can go and sit down with him and talk about this. Instead of writing letters every day, giving us different kind of influence to Nigeria. If, if Obama don't want to settle some of these issues, during his own time, 2000, Kaduna has divided into two teams today. Jos has divided into two teams today. Kano State has divided into two teams today. If Obasu doesn't want to be sincere to Nigeria, you should go and settle those places first. You should go and settle those. Some of the crises have been emitted for during his own time. You should not be writing all these letters to Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you very much, Victor, for calling in. Quite frankly, <laughs> this is what the program is all about. We wanted to really views. see what, what, what are the views on this letter. There are those who are saying that, oh, it was a very timely, it was courageous, it's patriotic. And there are those that essentially are like Victor. Say, look, is the, is the former president want to really speak uh, about these matters? What did he do uh, when he was in charge? But then I suppose the most intelligent way to look at this is, can we just Not divorce this. the messenger? from the message it's, it's because and see, does the message have import does it have any 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 substance and i think most people would say yes it does we completely run out of time but just a few it's words. because nigerians say that jonathan was not doing well that's yeah. why uh, buari was elected okay if you want to be a populist you can't use the approach of somebody who, who sells ice, ice cream who, shall, who, who will be laughing all the time to rule nigeria we need to tackle some of these problems Headlong. And people voted President Buhari because they felt he had that. He had what it takes that, that to, you it. Know, to take on Nigeria headlong. Oh, sure. But uh, Joshua from Wale also said that there are also these challenges. Is he going to behave like a uniform-wearing military president? Or is he, does he have to behave as a democratic That's president? That's why I say that this program is so beautiful because you have such views. So what, what should happen is that we need leadership. Leadership is to listen to those views take his time and protect the lives of people because we didn't vote. We voted, I voted for him and I carry marks all over my, from my friends. And we voted for our own security absolutely. in voting so for him. Do I the guess job that's a fine place to leave it. For it. I guess that's, the, that's a fine place to leave it. I want to thank you very much, uh, Chuk Swonko, um, social commentator, and uh, also Majid Jamio, uh, executive editor.
Upshot Media Reports. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for sharing your perspectives. And indeed, our thanks to you out there for letting us know what your perspective is on this kind of an issue. Please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I am Yori Folani. Bye-bye for now.